All right, so I'm going to kind of recap Jesus. He said, who do you say that I am last week? Remember that? Most important, like the answer of who is he? And um, so at the end of that, he said, the son of man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. And then here's our, our story for today. It starts in verse 23. It says, and he, and he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words the Son of Man will be ashamed of Him when He comes in His glory, and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I say to you truthfully that there are some of those standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. And there at the end, you know, it's kind of hard for us, you know, because they all died, and we think He's talking about the return. But it's talking about see the kingdom of God. And so many of those men did see the kingdom of God before they died. There's even stories of it telling us how they saw the kingdom of God. Paul being taken up into heaven wasn't one of these men, but it was just what was expected of men who did, who answered this call, that you would see God. And I have had many experiences in my life. I can't say I've seen the kingdom of God, but I've certainly seen essence of it. I've seen results of it. I've seen his hand. I've seen the king in certain ways. So I'm not sure that one's explainable totally, and you can... Um, I'm not sure I understand it is what I guess I'm trying to say, but I do know these men, many of them saw the kingdom of God before they died because I just believe what Jesus said, that they would, and they did. But let's go back to the first verse, and I think that these verses I read, they, they come against the theology of many groups of believers. It's we create a uh, what we want to be about. We create a vision statement or a mission statement. And this thing here just blows it out of the water. It doesn't allow us our deci decided belief. We have to read the Bible and say, well, I don't do that. Okay, just turn the page. Just go to something else that makes you feel better because that one there didn't make me feel very good. And if I, who quote this to anybody, I get called religious or harsh or legalistic. But I want, to I want to remind us that what we're doing here is reading the words of Jesus and then acting upon them. Reading the words of Jesus and then deciding to believe them. And what he says here so clearly, this first verse, 22, 20, I'm sorry, 23, let's put it back up there. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself Take up his cross daily and follow me. There are five points in that one verse. It says, anyone who wishes to come after me. Anyone who wishes to come after me. What the heck does that mean? Come, I'm going to go after you. No, it, it means follow him. It means anyone who wishes to go with me. Must. You want to go with me? Then you must deny yourself. The second thing is must. I guess the first one is, do you want to be a Christian? I jumped off of it too quickly. Anyone who would come after me is anyone who wants to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, anyone who would follow me, anyone who would come after me, anyone who would decide, I want to be a Christian, must first. And it says must. It's not an option. It's not, so my theology I created doesn't allow for that must deny myself. In fact, it allows me to say that if I don't deny myself, then I am blessed by God. And if I don't demonstrate my blessing by wearing fine rings and driving the most expensive cars and, you know, dazzling the world with my prosperity, that, that I owe it to you to see what a blessed life looks like. And that looks like finance or that looks like, you know, personal comfort and shiny bling. Then I read this. It says, deny myself. And it says it's not an option. I read the, the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. He says, in your life you had many. 
many blessings, and you never shared them with Lazarus. When the young ruler says, he says, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself is the commandment in the law, the greatest commandment in the law. The guy says, I've done that. He's like, no, go sell everything you have and give it to poor people. And then maybe you've loved them as much as you've loved you. But you still lack one thing. You've got to come follow me. And if anyone who would come follow me, they must deny themselves. Man, did he really have to say that? I mean, it gets worse. Did he really have to say that? You see, when he said must, it's not optional. It's not optional. It's not a maybe. To be a Christian following Jesus, and I don't know that there's any other way. Christian, by definition, has Christ in it. It's a Christian, a Jesusian. That's what it is. And to be a Jesus man or a Jesus person or a Christian, a little Jesus, you must deny yourself. Like, how does that work? Maybe we just turn the page to a better feeling verse. One that says something more about bless me, bless me, bless me. Because this one here is calling me to a challenge, man. We know these men eventually got it right. They weren't getting it right now, but they, they eventually got it right, and they're the heroes of the faith. They delivered the gospel to me. I know that by reading the name at the top of the book. Mark and John and Peter were there, and they delivered the gospel to me. And they, we read of their history, and they were incredibly, incredibly got it. And they denied themselves. And they were all martyred. And they all spent their whole life. They walked away from everything. They walked away from their religion, their culture, their country, their families. They walked away. Peter was with his wife when he got killed because she got killed with him. But his only request at death was, kill her first so she doesn't have to suffer watching me die. He, even then he was laying down his life for his wife. These men were heroes because they got this, what he taught them. He, they didn't get it today in this, and maybe you won't get it today, but maybe if I tell you the truth, it'll soak in like, like a hard sponge. You put a few drops and it just starts moving through, sponging through, wicking through, and eventually the sponge gets soft. Maybe you'll get it later. But it's not optional, this must. This must is absolute. And what is the must? Must deny self. What the honking pick and fat does that mean? You know what I mean? You like that honking pick and fat? My wife don't like it. Yeah. Deny self is so clear it's unbelievable, and I'm just going to make you all mad at me right now, or I'm, maybe I won't, but it's deny flesh. Guys, people, you say you're a Christian and you're in a sexual relationship with someone you're not married to? You're not a Christian. You are not a follower of Jesus Christ. They don't do that. They deny flesh. You have an accident, overcome, you repent. It's a different story. But you're just going to do what you want to do because your flesh needs it? You're going to harm somebody else? You're not Christian. You are not a follower of Jesus Christ. You are all bound up with your money. You are not a Christian. Deny self. Quit being a taker. You're a taker. You're constantly taken. I saw this post on Facebook the other day, and I digress to bring that crazy thing into our service, but I saw this post on Facebook. It was a, the church secretary accidentally put $5,000 in your account. And then let you know, but that was an accident. It was supposed to go into this children's account or something. Do you return the money? That was quick. And I think there were 5,000 responses like in 10 minutes. And I got to read about 200. I just kept reading because it was fascinating how many people said no. That's my money. God does not make mistakes. He put that money in my account because he wants it in my account. I asked that people, I asked that for a few people in my, my group out there on the property, and a couple said, heck yeah, I keep the money. Absolutely, I keep the money. Oh, it's mine. I don't give that back. When you, when you are a taker and it's your money, you are not 
Now, this is kind of scary because there are people here who just began their walk, and there are people here who have been walking forever, and nothing ever changes. They're still just as greedy, just as fearful of poverty, just as fearful of, of not getting their flesh satisfied. I mean, I have people who are honest. I can't be a Christian. I want to have sex with everybody. Usually that's mostly men, by the way. You think I'm exaggerating. I'm not. Deny your flesh. Deny yourself. And then here comes the, here comes the butt kicker, I guess. This becomes the rear end kicker of them all. You mu- after the word must, pick up your cross daily. What the heck are we going to do with that? I could say honk and pick and fat again, but what the heck are we going to do with that? Pick up my cross daily? What does that mean even? Well, for Jesus, it meant dying for people who were driving a nail in his hand, his wrist, right there between the two bones. A nail, man. It wasn't a nail. It wasn't a little little thin finish nail. It was a spike. Can you imagine And he did it knowing it was going to happen, and he did it for those calling him names. He'd been punched through the night, whipped at a whipping post, and he was doing it for that guy. The expert whipper that tore his flesh off his back, he did it for him. I wouldn't die for the person who cut me off on the freeway. You follow me? So I've got a lot of room here to change. Some days I would die for everybody. Other days I wouldn't die for anybody. Some, if I were God, some days everybody would get into heaven. Other days, nobody would get into heaven. Aren't you glad I'm not God? <laughs> Truthfully. But here's the thing. Deny myself, pick up my cross. If I want to be a Christian, who's teaching that anymore? He is. I don't want to. I woke up this morning really early to speak in Pakistan, and I don't. I looked at these verses, you know, again this morning, saying, "Oh, man, I, I'm going to be challenged again because I really like things that are all about me." Don't you? I love it when I'm taken care of, when someone does it for me. I love it, and it's a good place to be when you're old and you can't do it anymore, where people do it for you, and it's a really incredible service. But I'm not talking about what actually happens. I'm talking about what I want. And I, you know, I don't want to pick up my cross. What I have to decide, though, is do I want to be a Christian? If I do, then I better deny my flesh, which includes my mind thinking about things. You see, this message of it doesn't matter what you do and it's faith, not, it's, it's, there's no works involved in salvation. If you say you believe you're saved no matter what you do, that theology has brought us a long way into the pit where church after church is filled with people who are going to go, without, go to hell. Listening to a guy who has a church of 13,000 the other day, and he's planted churches of 10 everywhere, and he's up there talking, and he's got this crowd, and they eat out of his hands because he is one of the best speakers I know. And he is just, he challenges them. Sometimes I cry when I hear him speak because he's pouring out my heart, man. And I saw him say to this crowd, and I can't get away with this, but I'll go ahead and say what he said so you don't think I'm saying it to you. He said, the greatest sadness in my life is when I come here week after week after week and the chairs are filled with people that I know in the end you're not going to make it to heaven because these words aren't changing your life. You're not responding to what he said. You're going to be that one that says, why did you call me Lord and not do what I said? I don't even know you. You're going to be that one. Because you won't submit to change. You won't submit to growth. We all know what babies do. They poop their diaper. And I'm sorry to bring that picture into your brain, but they poop their diaper. And there's nobody spanking babies for pooping their diaper. And there's nobody mad at the baby for pooping their diaper. We all so graciously serve and wipe and clean and take care of the mess because it's what they do. They They can't do any better. That's all they can do. Right? But what about your 15 year old pooping his diaper? Don't you know there's something wrong with him? And if there is something where he can't help it, you still don't get mad at him. But what about your not? There's nothing wrong with him, but he just wants you to clean him up. 
right? It's distasteful. I mean, he gets. Don't we expect him to change? What are those parents doing allowing that? You know, like we all, hmm. But I mean, it's clear. When people are baby Christians, they do things, they poop their diaper. They don't do it right. But as they learn and they grow and these words are read and they change, they stop doing these things. They stop satisfying their flesh and they stop taking. And they carry their cross and they lay down their life for even for people that don't like them. Hardest thing on the earth. Lay down your life for someone that doesn't like you. Lay down your life for your neighbor. Carry your cross for those who don't even like you. It's easier to carry a cross for someone that doesn't like me than it is for me for someone that I don't like. i got to change. Because it's not an option. You want to be a Christian? You must. Deny self. Carry cross. Die for, your, die for the world around you. Love them as I have loved you. I mean, love them as I have loved you all by itself says die for them because that's how he loved you. Pay the penalty for their mistake. Carry the cross for them. Make it right for them. Here's how you make it right for them. You forgive them anything they did to you. Jesus said all kinds of things like this. If you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And I'm like, ah. I have to be forgiven. I'm, there's no hope for me unforgiven because I fall short. I fall short of this today. And I know I got work to do. I, know I have a prize to go after. I have not arrived. If you think I have because of a position, then you don't understand the position. I am on the guard. The whole Christian world is full of pastors failing their moral responsibility, failing at being givers instead of takers. The whole Christian world is full of leadership that is leading people to hell. And, and it's hard to tell the players without a scorecard. It's hard to tell because they all speak the same language. They sit in churches that look the same. And what that man said was, I'm, my greatest sorrow is that 13,000 people come to church and I wonder how many of you are actually responding to what he said. His words in one of his books was, shouldn't we just listen to Jesus and do what he says? And he's trying to tell a church, and I'm like, how? if I said that all the time, as often as he says that, the church would just kind of like dwindle down to nothing. Because today, people come to have their ears tickled. But Jesus is not tickling anybody's ears. Nor do I want to be deceived into hell. I want the truth. Okay, as hard as it is, okay, I want the truth. I'm building a house, and I had a call back on a siding mishap. So I was there for a couple of days, the siding delaminated, so I had to go replace it. And this guy, during the whole building of the house, he was, he was non-existent. His wife did the whole thing, and he was angry. He's an angry man. Got a chance to go in the house because I had to teach him how to use his wood stove because in a new house, in new style houses, you don't boil the water on a wood stove or you get moisture in the air everywhere because houses are airtight today, or they close to airtight. So... You don't do that in a new house. And he had moisture problems. So I went in to try to educate him on new housing and wood stoves. And he was just so angry. But in this interaction and teaching him what, how he can fix his problem, he started talking to me and he told me, and I, just like, why are you, you know, what's going on? And we're talking about a, kind of an evil anger too, just a gross anger. He told the story of being in a troop carrier in Vietnam and going through a village and they were, leaning out of the troop carrier, buying the things from the kids because they'll sell chiclet gum or something and the GIs would, the soldiers would buy it to help their families and they didn't want chiclets or they didn't want what they're selling. And one kid just threw a grenade in the back of the troop carrier. And it was, in an instant, they all looked to see it was a grenade and one guy dove down on the grenade and killed and died. And they were all saved. And he told this story and he was so angry, hateful, and he just would scream demonically. I didn't ask him to do that for me. Why would he do that? See, not everybody loves that you give your life for them. See, I think that guy will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I hope with all my heart he meets Jesus because I told him about him. I told him the truth the love of God. 
You know, you didn't ask Jesus to die for you either, but he did. And it's up to you to take, to do something. That life that guy gave you at the expense of his own, what have you done with it besides sit in a dark hole drinking every day until, until your liver's shot and one day you're, you'll die from liver poisoning? That's what he gave his life for. To save all of his friends. I hope in that troop carrier there's guys that, you know, found the cure to cancer or something. Who knows? Vietnam vets are some of the greatest people on earth. And so this guy didn't appreciate it at all. But I think when he gets there and he sees that guy, he might yell because he might still be angry. Why? And that guy will not regret it for an instant. I'm so happy I gave my life for you. I gave you a chance to respond to the truth. I asked him, do you know if the guy was a Christian? Yeah, he was one of those Bible thumpers. He's just such an angry man. In my years in business, I've ran across many people like this. And not quite as definite a story as this one, but it's such a clear picture of someone gave you their life for you. What do you do with that life? And what do you understand about what Jesus is saying about being a person who receives the grace of God into your life? You can, I'm, I'm paying the penalty for your sin. I'm offering you a free ride on your sin. I will serve your sentence. But you must. To do this, you must pick up your cross, deny yourself, follow me, carry your cross for others. As I have forgiven you, you forgive them. There's no options in this stuff. It's a must. It's not a kind of sort of maybe we should. Or, uh, you know, let's turn the page. We'll talk about that later. Well, later may never come. It's not an option. You may never be at this crossroads 12, 15 on a Sunday morning at the Father's House Church where the Holy Spirit is convicting you to tell you to stop what you're doing, to turn from your ways, deny your flesh and stop your pornography addiction, stop your sexual immorality, stop your alcoholism and your drug addiction, turn from your wicked ways to follow Jesus. And I didn't call him wicked ways, he did. And if we read these verses... For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save his life, who will save it. Now, what does it mean? What does this mean? It's kind of poor translation, really, in my opinion. It's whoever tries to build their life into something will lose their soul. Whoever tries to save their life, to make their life profitable or for them, You'll lose your soul. But anyone willing to lay down their life and their pursuits will gain their soul. Anyone selfish gets nothing. He who is selfless in the pursuit of the cross, carrying Jesus' cross through life, will receive everything. You can be bat crap crazy. You can be absolutely insane and still receive the grace of God. You can be the smartest, sharpest, easiest Everything comes easy to you, intelligent, fast thinking. You can be physically Adonis, gorgeous, all those things and lose your soul. Or you can be nothing and gain your soul. And either one can lose or gain their soul. I see so many people in misery. When, G when, when the Lord spoke to Lazarus and the rich man, he said, in your life you had many pleasures and many benefits and you never shared any with him. He's not going to leave heaven to come to hell to give you water. He was denied all those things his whole life. And you had them all and did nothing with them. I will not make him leave heaven to come to hell to serve you. In life, he had his suffering. He, lay, he was humble. For, this, for whoever wishes to save his own life will lose his soul. And he who seeks to serve and lay down his life will gain his soul. Anyone who would come after me must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. I tell you that I fall short of this, but I'm on a journey. The upward call of God in Jesus Christ. My eyes are on the prize. I'm running the race to completion. And I am not going to stop running. 
I pummel my body. I fail a little bit. I fail here. I fail there. I say, no, that is not who I want to be. I am jumping up and going again. We are after Jesus. We will, I will be after him. If I find there's someone I can't lay my life down for, I'm going to ask forgiveness and help. Can you help me lay my life down for them? Can you help me give of my selfishness to them? Can you help me abandon my pursuit of my own life being good so that I might let you bless my life and let you bless my soul? I think these verses are so amazing. I want to read them to you again as a closing. The Son of Man must suffer many things. I'm sorry I went back on you. 22. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory. And the glory of the Father and the glory of the holy angels. But I say to you truthfully, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death till they see the kingdom you just let those words soak in your heart. Let God show you your life where you measure up to those words and where you don't. Where you need work, where as a baby you're still messing it, or as an adult or mature, you've been a Christian a while, you shouldn't be messing it. Where you should change. Where your growth will take you from babyhood to adulthood, mature Christian, or where as an adult, you have abandoned all truth to let your ears be tickled by the church's message that it doesn't matter what you do. The greatest sorrow for any pastor is that he lay down his life for his flock and that they don't let it change them. And on such a small level as Jesus who laid down his life for the world and they won't let it change them. They won't receive it. Help us reach him, Lord. I am after you. Now I'm going to pray, and if you agree with this prayer at the end, I'm going to ask you to amen. Father, I want to be like Jesus. I want to deny myself, pick up my cross, and follow you. I want to come after you. I want to do exactly what you said, and I'm not that good at it, so I need help. Will you help me, Lord, to get better at forgiving, get better at not judging, get better at following you and laying down my life for you? Will you help me, Lord, get better at this? I ask you to forgive me for not letting this be important to me. Can you say amen to that? I am ask you to forgive me for not giving my all to this pursuit of following you. Can you say amen? Can you help me change to be more like you, Jesus? Can you help me change to be more like you, Jesus? Can you help me change to be more like you, Jesus? Can you say amen if you agree? Amen. amen. I want all that you have for me. I want to carry your cross. I want to carry my cross. I want to carry your name. I want to do it all for you but I'm selfish, Lord. Will you forgive me? Can you say amen to that? If, if that's you. Hallelujah. Thanks for watching the Father's House Orville YouTube channel, but don't stop there. We'd love you to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss a live service or a video. Help us spread the message of Jesus by sharing this video with your friends. You can also support the Father's House financially by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for watching today, and we hope to see you again soon.